Thanks for joining us at Celebrating Act Two, where today John and I speak with one of our favorite human beings in all of the universe, Manny Pacheco. Manny Pacheco, who knows, who is Mr. Hollywood. Manny, I love these conversations, not just because we talk about uh, the history of Hollywood, but you you take us to not only the stars, the big names of of the of the of Hollywood have filmed them. Um, and the big movies remind me of all the movies that I've seen that I keep forgetting about how wonderful mm -hmm. they are. But you also take us behind the scenes. Now, whether it's, you know, these days literally going live with you to a, a TCM or a Hollywood Heritage Festival or something like that, or whether it's just reminiscing about mm -hmm. uh, famous people from behind the scenes, I love the fact that you have that view of Hollywood history and heritage and I, I don't know what is there another word for behind the scenes the unsung heroes below the well, line below the line below the line is a is a, a good below industry. the line would be the the trade code yeah yeah it's an industry term uh yeah there are a lot of uh unsung heroes i mean you can look in in, in the special effects and costuming one of my favorites is the guy who really was the go-to makeup man at universal and you say his name and people just are not familiar with him and what a shame but i'll tell you who who does remember him and that is any any makeup person worth their salt including the fabulous rick baker uh is jack pierce jack pierce was a man who worked at universal from um the silent era into the 30s and 40s uh, unfortunately he was unceremoniously let go and then forgotten but I will tell you, in between, he did some of the most iconic work you can ever imagine. I mean, when you think of Frankenstein, you think of Jack Pierce's Frankenstein. When you think of the mummy, you think of Jack Pierce's mummy. When you think of the bride of Frankenstein, you think of Jack Pierce's bride of Frankenstein. And when you think of the Wolfman, you think of Jack Pierce's Wolfman. I wow. mean, that's... That's saying a lot about yeah. America. Yeah, he so he one guy did all those. Hmm. Yes, he did, and and he and he always wear a surgeon's outfit. He looked about as scary as the monsters that he was creating, but <laughs> to an individual and particularly Boris Karloff, there was a real genial relationship. Boris Karloff spoke Jack Pierce's praises, and, and basically stated that his career was founded on the makeup of Jack Pierce. Hmm. And that's saying a lot. They did a, okay. this is, remember Ralph Edwards when he did the, this is your life? Boris yeah. Karloff came out uh, to be honored. And one of the, the folks that, that came out to honor him was Jack Pierce. Yeah. And Boris just spoke his praises and what a wonderful treat that is. That's interesting. Now, since then, since Jack Pierce, when did he uh, leave the scene? When did he stop working? Well, probably right before Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. That's that's not Jack Pierce's work. Yeah. Uh, but prior to that, everything was Jack Pierce's work, and he would work on some of these films where they would feature the Frankenstein monster, yeah. and the Wolfman, and Dracula, and yeah, he'd have to get everybody ready. Yeah. And when you sat in Jack Pierce's chair, expect to be sitting there for a number of hours so amazingly careful and time consuming he was that in some cases, uh, uh, Lon Chaney, for example, Lon Chaney Jr. would go home in his makeup because he didn't want to sit in the chair the next day. <laughs> yeah. you imagine having to you know, live your, your entire day after shoot dressed yeah. as the wolf man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, back in those back in those days, they didn't have like the latex masks and things like that, where they would make three dozen of them and use that as the basics for latex. Do we have any work? Jack Pierce, he did <laughs> yeah. not like that concept at all. Mm -hmm. And and you know when he did, one one other thing I'll mention about about Lon Chaney's makeup, it, Jack had to put in all that hair almost piece by piece, and he always says that his favorite kind of hair to use was. And this is just so perfect of a monster movie. He liked to use yak hair. <laughs> you know, I recall hearing about that somewhere. Yeah. Now, yeah. I want to talk about it, the first part of his career because he did do one I, really iconic look in the silent era. 
There was a movie called The Man Who Laughs, and it starred the fabulous German actor Conrad Veidt. Arguably, he was the European Lon Chaney. He was that good. And Conrad Veidt, you might remember him as in, Inspector, uh, as a, um, a, the, the Colonel Strasser, uh, the bad guy in Casablanca. But, oh, back, yeah. but back when he did The Man Who Laughs, Jack Pierce's makeup was so iconic that the folks who created Batman, I believe his name was Bill or Bob Kane. It, it, his last name was Kane. Kane, yeah. Yeah, and he modeled his Joker off the look of Conrad Veidt's makeup from The Man Who Laughs. Oh, that's interesting. So now every Joker you see is Jack Pierce's Joker. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, uh, what I was going to say, Manny, is that as as iconic as Pierce is, and I never heard his name before, um, he was in an era when I guess maybe nobody did publicity for the bo below-the-line people. Because mm -hmm. think about since then, in the 50s and the 60s, um, Rick Baker and all these other, they get their own magazines. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And they're, they're played up as famous parts of Hollywood. That's you right. Know, the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Well, but not, uh, not Pierce. No, not Pierce, because Pierce was really not looking for any kind of stardom. He was just dedicated to his work. This this guy was, you know, like Max Steiner did to music. He he just buried himself in his work and and it was all about the work. He was out he wasn't out there promoting what he was doing. He just wanted to let the uh let the monster speak for themselves. And there are those folks who work in Hollywood at for example at Universal. Uh, 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 Scott Essman comes to mind. He's a Universal historian and a good friend. He says, arguably, as as good as the Frankenstein monster was, the mummy might have been his best creation. And for the amount of time you see the mummy, you don't see him hardly at all in the movie. Now, that's it, just for anybody in the audience who uh, thinks that they know all the mummy, you're not talking about the more recent mummy. You're talking about the original black and white. Original, yeah. yeah, Boris Carl. People could not believe that that was the same man who played Frankenstein. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, and, and of course... And then, you know, as far as, you know, not he was a very equal opportunity. His bride of Frankenstein, yeah. Elsa, Elsa Lan Lancaster. Yeah, yeah she, um, she was able to play uh, uh, Mary Shelley at the beginning, and she's mm -hmm. so demure and beautiful. And then this wonderful look. I, I mean, it still resonates. Uh, sure. It's, it's, it's a beauty of horror. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and, and one other thing I want to mention, you know, Jack Pierce's Frankenstein, though the face was always the same, his incarnation of the body of Frankenstein changed a lot. I mean, the, the, the original Frankenstein, where, where Boris Karloff was a little bit more emaciated because he would take out his false teeth and make him look that, that kind of done in, you know, cheek. He looked different from the son of Frankenstein or the bride of Frankenstein. So, um, you know, they, they all kind of look different. I think in, in Son of Frankenstein, he was wearing some sort of a sheep vest. And, and of course, then there was that character that I, I want to mention also, and that was Igor, the, 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 the Bela Lugosi's greatest character when he wasn't Dracula. Those, yeah. those teeth that he had. It was the only time that Bela Lugosi wore fangs, not when he was Dracula, but when he was Igor, the man with the broken neck. Yes. who kind of shepherded Frankenstein around. He was very, very evil. Yeah. Another another great Jack Pierce work. Wow. Mm. Jack Pierce, let's go. I'm glad to learn the name. <laughs> You'll never forget him. And remember, the next time you see kids trick-or-treating, it's a celebration to Jack Pierce when they wear the Frankenstein outfit or the, or, or the wolf yeah. outfit. That is a complete yeah. tribute, and children should know that. Well, the one thing I won't get out of my mind, uh, and you always leave us with something, is yak hair. <laughs> That's the only kind of hair to use when you when you when you uh, do the makeup for the Wolfman. I this I, is I, this I, is yak God. hair. This is yak <laughs> hair. That's yakety yak hair. Huh. I think enough. Yak Bobby har har. <laughs> yeah. Manny, thanks again for everything. You got it. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.